Good morning, welcome to today's RC Coffee Chat. Now unfortunately, I didn't go flying yesterday. Uh, turns out none of the lads were up for it. And FPV can be kind of boring by yourself, so didn't end up going flying, which was a bit of a sad day. But it did turn into a bit of a build day. Uh, and that's what we're going to be looking at this morning. Now in today's RC News, uh, I do have a DVR sample uh, from the Hubson OSD which I covered yesterday so you can see what it looks like. Uh, and I've got a collection of models which I worked on uh, yesterday as well so you can see their progress too. Uh, so with that said, let's go and have a look at the uh, OSD. So let me just go and make this into... Ooh. Need to mute that. Right, let me just pause that for a moment. So this is the Hubson OSD. And you'll see that I've been and put my tag up here in the top left hand corner. Uh, we've got the pack voltage, uh, the current, <coughs> excuse me, current being used down here. So we're at 5.1 amps. And if you watch my finger on the throttle, uh, we go up to I think a maximum of about 14.2. Uh, then on the right hand side we've got the milliamps being used, uh, being counted on the right hand side and then also our counter as well. So let me just go and press play again and wait for my thumb to go up on the throttle. There we go. So you'll see that we've now got, we can now see the current being used and suddenly the uh, milliamp here used is uh, increasing here on the right hand side. So let me carry on, press play. My thumb's back down, so we're pulling about maybe 300 milliamp the hours uh, when uh, the throttle is down, which is about right because we've got the Hubson OSD, uh, we've got the receiver and we've got the video transmitter in there. So that's about right. Uh, and then you'll see the voltage sag a touch when we, uh, when we move the throttle. And then again, look, you can see that I've left it uh, for a few seconds and that extra menu appears. Uh, so yeah, voltage sag, current goes up. Uh, milliamp for use goes up as well. So yeah, really, really simple. It does come out with this nice big bold text uh, on the OSD as well. Uh, there was an option to have a center point in there, but that does mean that you probably should spend more time than what I probably did uh, and got getting the camera exactly level. Uh, so I didn't elect to put that option on. So yeah, that's the Hubson OSD. <clears throat> very, very cool. Uh, now, what did I do yesterday? I re finally retired the bonsai, the baby bonsai, uh, and I converted my mental bonsai back into my baby bonsai. Uh, the only real thing of note on this one, let me just turn that around so you can see. Uh, I did put a nice big ID card to cover the bottom, and I was also getting fed up with the motor wires uh, getting pulled out every five minutes. Uh, so I've put those, put those through the model and popped them out on the top. Uh, and also I printed out some winglet protectors as well. There's the white things on the end uh, and I printed those out to help protect the winglet. So I've got a new baby bonsai which I'm chuffed about. Uh, I really do like chucking those around on 2S. Uh, really, really good fun. Uh, so yeah, that was the baby bonsai. What else have I got in here? Uh, oh yeah, you didn't see the state of uh, my receiver which was uh, in the um, Wing Wing Z84. <laughs> That's a bit mad. Oh, talking of the Wing Wing Z84, uh, I finally got round, well, I just got pulled her out of the airing cupboard because she got a hot bath uh, and started gluing her up. So just count, try and count how many pins I've got in here. Uh, so we repaired the nose up. Uh, I did do one side first, which was this left hand side, uh, and let that set. Uh, and once that had set, and I think I did that joint there because that whole piece there was separate. Uh, and then if we take a look at the bottom, uh, yeah, she's had major surgery. <laughs> uh, and there's quite a few support and pins in there, uh, to say the least. Now, give you a heads up for the glue, which I chose uh, back on the previous one. Uh, I did choose CA glue uh, for that joint. Um, not entirely sure why I chose CA. I think it was just the nearest glue which I had to hand uh, for that. Uh, and, be, uh, and the other one, I mean, it was really nice tight fit as well. So CA did kind of like make sense for that one. Whereas on this one, for this gap here, which which it was, is it looks really, really good on there. And actually when you see it in the, in the flesh, it's actually pretty good. But inside uh, is down in that edge there. There is There was a bit of a gap, so I needed a glue which would cover an expanse, uh, and, you know, like a millimetre or two in some places, uh, and I went for the Zap glue 
down there. Uh, other that, um, I could have used some goop glue, for example, or some Yuhi pour, but zap glue just seemed to be about the right glue for that. So that's what I've been and done. And she is now sat in the airing cupboard uh, to cook for a couple of days just to make sure that glue really, really does go off uh, in a nice, well, I'll leave it in there for the rest of today uh, and then think about popping a motor in her. Uh, so yeah, that's the progress so far. Now, when it comes to the flight controller, uh, that, that's a curious one because the more research which I've done, ba basically the APM works, okay? That, that's the basic summary of it, the, the APM works. But I can't help keep wondering is that maybe I should go and pop the Pix Racer in there. Uh, and the reason why I'm thinking the Pix Racer is because I've already got one here uh, and I can put it in there, put it in there as proof of concept and see how it does uh, without having to shell out any more cash. Uh, it also makes it curious because while I do have a, an F3 flight control board, the thing is with iNav, my, my confidence really isn't there with it that much at the moment. I know I'm going to put it in the chuck glider, uh, but just because the board is absolutely tiny, I'll give you an idea. Look, that's the size. Put that, it's still on my desk look at the size of the board okay it's absolutely tiny um this potentially this setup which i've got some scales next to me actually so i'll give you an idea on the weight so the all up weight even with the extra cables hold, kicking around so wait for that to zero uh approximately 28 grams uh including the receiver as well so that's not bad at all uh but i can't help but think Pix Racer, better components, better sensors, and things like that. It is going to come in at quite a bit more weight, but it's easier to configure. Uh, we will be using Mission Planner rather than, um, what should we call it, uh, iNav, which is just a hacked up version of uh, CleanFly. And the other thing which I'm thinking is that I can preload missions onto it, whereas with uh, iNav, I'll have to then connect in via Bluetooth and then set up the missions via my phone. So, oh, yeah, it's a bit of a tricky one, bit of a 50-50 moment. That option there would definitely be a million times lighter. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, it would be a lot lighter uh, and it would be a lot simpler to install. Uh, mainly because the GPS unit is absolutely tiny and the main board is absolutely tiny. So uh, if I was ab completely paranoid about weight, then this option would be pretty good. But I'd like to do some stuff for Mission Planner. So yeah, it's a curious one for that one. I don't know, what, what do you reckon? Do I go with iNav or do I go for the Pix, which is basically a Pix Alt, the Pix Racer, uh, and pop that one in now? I, I don't know, what do, what do you think? Uh, in short, I've got both sets of boards available to me so uh, any suggestions are very very much welcomed now moving on uh, i've got some more photos here that was the baby bonsai which we saw earlier yeah the front nose piece needed a little bit more work so she had a bit of glue in there oh i did have to make a new like a backing plate for the motor so that i've just glued that in and just put the screws in there just hold it down uh, when it comes to the bonsais i'm just using servo screws Dirt simple, got loads of them. I'm sure like you, you've got loads of servo screws kicking around. Uh, and I've never had a problem with them ripping out, uh, to be frankly honest. Uh, what else did we do yesterday? Uh, oh, yeah, let me put that photo up. So that's the uh, 3D printed little winglet protector, which I definitely think is a really good idea because I can see the state of one of the winglets up on the bonsai, which is up there on the wall now. Uh, my first wall hanger. Uh, which has now got sentimental value to it, so I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Uh, so, yeah, on my conversion, I've also put the little wingnet protector in there as well. And I think I'll put a nice big dope uh, or blob of hot glue round on that corner. Uh, I was also trying to work out the best position for the strobe light to go on the uh, F or the Phantom flying wing still kind of undecided it, it would be nice to have it here above the nose but then i'm a bit concerned about that's where the underneath here the fpv equipment the cabling is like here uh, we've got the camera there and that cable runs down that way uh, so i am a bit 50 50 about putting it here just because of noise uh, if that makes sense uh, i'd prefer it out maybe over here or over here or anywhere bar like this 
front section here. So, mm, I'm still not unsure, still unsure on that one. Uh, the Wingnetic, uh, I finally got round uh, to turning into a slope sawer. Uh, my challenge was was how many glue sticks could I use in the nose, uh, and the answer was four glue sticks worth of hot glue uh, I put in that nose area. I really did pack it out with a load of foam. I think I've got a close-up shot there. So that is really now wrapped up. But there's loads of foam in the nose. Uh, I've put glass reinforced tape around it uh, and uh, also put some white uh, packing tape over the nose as well to make it a little bit more pretty. Uh, I've put a little u back in there as well. The battery, um, I've gone for a thinner. It's actually a 1.3. Uh, battery which I've gone for which adds enough weight to get the C of G right in her and I can stuff it right down the end uh, and just connect the battery up and it all looks hunky-dory uh, right now. Now I did also do uh, another modification to it as well uh, just so that everybody knows on the flight line that it is a complete POS. Uh, I've uh, spent oh absolutely ooh, about 30 seconds uh, drawing that on the bottom uh, and there is another photo which I can't show you uh, which is my new nickname for the Wingnetic uh, which is in the Facebook group if you want to see what that one is so yeah yeah happy days happy days oh I also thoroughly cooked the uh, uh, what should we call it the Phoenix 2000 motor uh, so the motor which I had in there before I don't even can see how dark those white oh there's the other one uh, look how dark those windings are uh, it properly melted down in there it just won't chooch anymore uh, and I also made a bit of a screw up because I made a NACA uh, is it NACA mount on uh, NASA whatever it is uh, air vent uh, and I put it on the wrong end of my Phoenix 2000 so yeah balls <laughs> I got a lovely uh, uh, air vent out on it uh, and then I've just gone on to present it onto the top of the Phoenix 2000 this morning uh, and Matt did it the wrong way around what a plonker um, bit annoyed about that to be honest uh, but well yeah because it was such a lovely finish which I did on that one <laughs> I've now got to go and do it on this side just trying to get some air vents through oh and you'll also see that on the nose area uh, I've also highlighted uh, just drawn up quickly drawn out of a marker pen uh, uh, another I'm going to make that air vent a lot bigger there on the nose as well and then also down the bottom of the fuselage uh, I've drilled holes all the way down the bottom of the fuselage uh, to help air, air escape and the part which you can't see on here uh, is then behind the wings uh, I'm also going to put another air vent back there as well uh, and the reason for that is just to try and increase the airflow uh, through the center of this model uh, because those mo yeah it's such a pain in the arse to put motors in the Phoenix 2000 uh, is that I just want to go careful with it. If I'm if I'm honest, I just want to, the next motor which I put in there, which is an SK3 motor, uh, I want to make sure that there's plenty, plenty of airflow for her uh, so I don't cook it again. And I'm also going to have to adapt my flying style uh, because as much as I like to absolutely cane this model, um, yeah putting motors in this one is a royal pain in the rear uh, so yeah anything which I can do to get some better airflow uh, through the fuselage of the model I think is definitely a good idea I was even consider considering uh, taking out one of those little small uh, server fans I don't know if you've ever seen the back end of a one new server you get these tiny little fans in them uh, they're not particularly quiet but they don't have chuck some air through uh, and I was even considering mounting a server uh, servo fan uh, in there just to try and push air through uh, to cool down the motor so yeah happy days that's where I am right now sorry no flying on the weekend it was rather boring to be frankly honest um, and I had a whole day to myself as well which was because the family went out so yeah like I said FPV is a bit boring by yourself and everybody else was otherwise engaged with holidays and things like that uh, oh uh, I must must get the uh, Hornet uh, FPV uh, wing build overview uh, episode out today, uh, mainly because I, it's been in there since the 2nd of October, so it's almost been uh, in the unpublished list for uh, almost a month. Uh, and also, as we saw yesterday, that I've been in put a Hubson OSD in there, so it needs to get out. Uh, so I'll do my best to get that out today. And with that said, that's my progress over the weekend. Just getting stuff flying. Oh, I also fixed that. Andrew gave me a little uh, flying stick as well. Uh, and I finally got one, one 3.5 millimeter uh, ESC connector, 
or motor connector away from it being finished so yeah yeah indoors day yesterday did get through quite a bit quite happy with the progress um and I, again I, I the build stages for me is always frustrating because i'd rather be flying but um unfortunately other people have got other schedules for going out and flying so uh i've just got work around other people at the moment so hey ho it's the way it is sometimes uh just looking at the weather here in the uk just go and look at bbc weather uh doesn't look that bad this week there's a bit of sunshine this afternoon but i'm guessing most other people are going to be at work uh and not available to fly uh but on the bright side friday does look good for a bit of slope soaring uh potentially thursday as well yeah suddenly friday's looking good and the uh weekend uh is looks like sunshine all the way so happy days happy days so did you get out flying yesterday let me know in the comments section underneath this video. Uh, I'd love to. I didn't go flying, so tell me what you flew and what any any action which you had. So, with that said, for myself, Matt, thank you ever so much for joining in for today's RC Coffee Chat. And uh, my aim today is to get a couple of episodes out over the next couple of days. So, with that said, for myself, Matt, cheerios. <laughs>